This is my third video lesson on Unit 6B. In this lesson, we'll be determining the amount of moles using mass and volume. Let's go to page 8 in the class packet. Motivation, how can we count something we cannot see? As you know, we cannot see atoms with our eyes or even through a microscope. So in this lesson, we'll learn how to count atoms even though we cannot see them. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to calculate the molar mass and the volume and convert between mass, volume, and moles. Homework will be number three, which will be a dunapod based on this lesson. So how can we count something we cannot see? So let's say we have a bag of M&Ms. We want to count the number of M&Ms inside the bag. So how will you do that without touching the bag? The bag serves as a container, which holds the M&Ms. So let's say we know the mass of each individual M&Ms. They're roughly the same size. Then if you measure the mass of the bag of M&Ms and you know the mass of the bag, you can figure out how many M&Ms are in the bag while ever opening the bag. The math will be the mass of the M&Ms without the bag divided by the mass of one M&M. That will give you the number of M&Ms in the bag. You can apply the same math in a different bag of M&Ms Assuming the same type of M&M, you can figure out the number of M&Ms in this bag as well. To connect this example with chemistry, let's say we have a container filled with water and we want to count the number of water molecules in this container. So the water molecule will be analogous to the M&Ms and the container will be analogous to the bag. In a lab, we can use a scale to measure the mass of the container as well as the mass of water. So the question is, how can we figure out the mass of a water molecule? By using the periodic table, we can calculate the molar mass or the GFM of a water molecule, and that will be the mass of a water molecule. Then if you use the same calculations with the M&M analogy, we do the mass of water divided by the mass of one water molecule. That will give you a lot of water molecules, that's why we use mole to count molecules and atoms. And if you're given a different container of water, you can still figure out the number of water molecules in the container. For the first task, we will be counting with mass. And for the second task, we'll be counting with volume. So this equation can be found on table T in your reference table. The number of moles is equal to the mass over the gram formula mass. So the moles we use to count the number of atoms and molecules, the mass you can measure in the lab, and the grand formula mass you get it from the periodic table. So let's say we have one mole of CO2. Let's complete the table and figure out the GFM, the mass, the number of molecules and atoms. So from the periodic table, you can add up the atomic masses of carbon and oxygen, and you'll get the GFM of CO2 which is 44 grams per mole. To get the mass, we can plug it in into this equation. So one mole is equal to mass over 44. So the mass will be 44 grams of CO2. So if you have 44 grams of CO2, you have one mole of CO2. So how many molecules is that? Since we have one mole, that would be 6.02 times 10 to 23rd carbon dioxide molecules. How many atoms is that? In one molecule of CO2, we have three atoms. One carbon, two oxygen. So we multiply this number by three. That'll be 1.8 times 10 to the 24. You can also figure out the mass using the conversion factor and the equation. Start unit times desire over start gives you desire. Since we're given one mole, we use this conversion factor because that's mole in the denominator. One mole of CO2 times 44 grams over mole will give you 44 grams. The mole will cancel out. Just to review on how to count the number of atoms and molecules in your substance, you first have to measure the mass using a balance. Then you figure out the gram formula mass using the periodic table. And through this equation, you can get the number of moles. If we know the number of moles, we know how many molecules and atoms are present in your substance. The molar mass of a substance contains one mole. 
which is 6.02 times 10 to the 20 dirt molecule. So there is no instrument that can directly determine or measure the number of moles. So we have to calculate it indirectly through this method. Learning check number one. What is the mass of 1.5 moles of CO2? Pause the video and resume once completed. So the first step is to figure out the GFM of CO2. Then you use the equation on table T and solve for the mass, which is 66 grams. Learning check number two. Which quantity is equivalent to 39 grams of lithium fluoride? Pause the video and resume once completed. So again, you have to use the equation on table T and figure out the GFM of LIF. If you do that, the answer is choice four, 1.5 moles. Learning check number three. Which of the following is the smallest quantity of oxygen gas? Pause the video and resume once you complete it. One way to figure this out is to convert everything to the same unit. So we first figure out the GFM of O2, which is 32 grams per mole. So if we have 32 grams of O2, that is one mole of O2. So 2 and 4 have the same quantity because 1 mole is 6.02 times 10 to 20 dirt. So 2 and 4 are both wrong. So 16 grams is smaller than 32 grams. So that would be a half a mole. Half of 6.02 times 10 to 20 dirt. 32 AMU is the formula mass of one O2 molecule. So this is one molecule. So the answer is choice three, because that is the smallest quantity. So now I want you to complete the rest of the table on your own. Pause the video and resume once completed. Okay, here's the answers. In task two, we'll be counting with volume. At STP, one mole of ideal gas will occupy 22.4 liters of volume. Ideal gas will behave ideally under ideal conditions. We will discuss this further in the gas unit. So this is only true under STP. So STP is standard temperature and pressure. They are found on table A. So you have to memorize this conversion factor. So one mole is 22.4 liters. If gases have the same number of molecules or moles, then they will have the same volume. It does not matter if they're different molecules. Check of understanding number two, which balloon of gases have the same volume? Assume the balloon can expand. So we look at balloon A, B, and C. Balloon A and C will have the same volume. Why is that? Because balloon A and C have the same number of molecules. It does not matter if they're different molecules, right? They have the same amount. So which is 6.02 times 10 to 20 third. So both A and C have one mole of molecule. Balloon B have two moles of molecule. So we expect balloon B to be double the volume of balloon A and C. Learning check number four. At STP, which sample contains the same number of molecules as three liters of H2 gas? Pause the video and resume once you complete it. Since we're assuming ideal gas under STP conditions, the same number of molecules will occupy the same space. So the answer is choice three. Three liters of CH4 will have the same number of molecules as three liters of H2. Learning check number five, which sample contains the same number of molecules as sample A? Pause the video and resume once completed. So we need to look for the same conditions as sample A and the same volume. That would be sample B, choice two. Check of understanding number three, complete the table. Let's assume that these substances are ideal gases under STP. If we have one mole of CO2, what's the volume? So you need to know the conversion factor. One mole is 22.4 liters. How many particles is that? So that's based off the mole. We know one mole is 6.02 times 10 to 20 third. Let's look at xenon. So xenon also has one mole. So it will occupy the same space as CO2. 
which is 22.4 liters. How many particles is that? That's based off the mole. So we have the same amount of particles, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This should make sense because both CO2 and xenon have the same number of moles. So it should have the same number of particles and it will occupy the same volume. For H2O, we have three moles. We know one mole is 22.4 liters, so three mole will be 67.2 liters. How many particles is that? It will be three times 6.02 times 10 to 23rd, which is 1.8 times 10 to 24th. Check of understanding number four, since CO2 and xenon have the same number of moles, would they have the same mass, and why? So even though they have the same volume, they will not have the same mass because they have different GFMs. Both CO2 and xenon have different molar masses and GFMs, so they will have a different mass. Learning check number six, at SDP, what's the total volume occupied by two gram sample of H2 gas? Pause the video and resume once you complete it. So the first step is to determine the GFM of H2. So H2 has a GFM of two. How many moles is that? So since we have two grams of H2, that would be one mole of H2, and one mole at HTP will occupy 22.4 liters. The answer is choice four. Learning check number seven, the volume occupied by 9.03 times 10 to 20 dirt molecules of N2 gas at STP is closest to what? So the first step is to figure out how many moles is 9.03 times 10 to 20 dirt. That is 1.5 mole. 1.5 times 22.4 is 33.6. So the answer is choice four. Learning check number eight. What is the volume in liters of 576 grams of SO2 gas at SDP? Pause the video and resume once you complete it. The first step is to figure out the GFM of SO2, which is 64. The next step is to figure out the moles of 576 grams of SO2. So we do 576 divided by 64. That's 9 moles. To figure out how many liters, we do 9 times 22.4. That should give you about 202 liters. For the remainder of the practice, I want you to complete this table on your own. Pause the video and resume once you complete it. So here are the answers. So this concludes the video lesson for today. Remember to do the Junipod homework.